Guys, welcome to another episode of On the Water Magazine's Angling Adventures. I'm Chris Megan, publisher with On the Water Magazine. In 10 years of filming these shows, we've never had a two-part series. Well, join us as we head north of the border for this one. For as long as I fished, I had heard stories migrating down from Canada of a land whose beauty is surpassed only by its world-class fishing. So this past fall, when given the opportunity to fish with the Cuse family on the easternmost point of this Canadian province, I kissed my wife goodbye on my 50th birthday and set off for Prince Edward Island, the giant bluefin tuna capital of the world. Our journey covered 600 miles through scenic Maine and into Canada, where we crossed the better part of New Brunswick through Fredericton and then Moncton before splitting off north to Prince Edward Island, which is separated from Nova Scotia only by the Northumberland Strait. The fall in PEI is beautiful. Known for its pastoral landscape with rolling hills, sweeping farmlands, and red sandstone beachheads, the island is home to just over 130,000 year-round residents, most of whom descended from farmers, fishermen, and craftsmen. With nearly 80% of the islanders deriving from Scotland, Ireland, and England, the rich Celtic history plays a significant role in the island's culture and vernacular. At times, I felt I was back in Ireland visiting with family. As a mostly rural Canadian province, Prince Edward Island is well known for its hardy soil, which grows the famous PEI potato, its healthy fishery, and its welcoming spirit. Every year, anglers from all over the world make the pilgrimage to this beautiful island for the opportunity to battle a true giant, a fish that can grow to over 1,500 pounds. Arriving at the dock the next morning, I met up with fellow Massachusetts fisherman, Captain Fred Levitman, who had helped set up the trip along with legendary PEI Captain Cor Hughes and his two sons, Ross and Bruce, who were also captains. Fred had fished several times with the Hughes family, and on this trip, he had brought along some of his stand-up gear, which we were hoping to fight a giant or two on, given the chance. With our gear loaded and the boat ready, we pushed off the dock and were steaming out of North Lake Harbor on our way to the fishing grounds. With Captain Bruce Hughes behind the wheel guiding us through the narrow opening from North Lake and a beautiful sun rising in the east, my anticipation grew with each passing swell knowing that giant bluefin patrolled these waters. Taking a trip of a lifetime. If you're a fisherman, this is one of the items that's got to be on your bucket list. It's amazing that we're not even a mile offshore right now and we're already fishing for giants. This is a dream come true for me. I've never done, the biggest tuna I've gotten is 300 pounds and the fish that you guys are getting, the small ones they're calling are 450 pounds. I'm excited to be here. Bruce, what are we doing? I know we just started marking fish. Uh, we're just trying to hand feed the fish here. Like we're just throwing a bunch of mackerel hair and over, just letting it drift down slowly and looking as natural as possible. Just trying to get a little bit of uh, some stink in the water and then just float a herring down and try to sneak one in with a hook on it. Yeah, exactly. We're just trying to, we got to leave it free spool there because we got we use circle hooks. Yeah. And circle hooks, you got to let the two in a swallow the bait. It has to be all circle hooks up here? Yeah, all I, circle okay, hooks. Okay, I did not know that. Just in charter fish. The commercial fishing, we use J hooks or J whatever, hooks. but yeah. So you know that for the most part, you're letting the fish speed, take it, run, yep. then tighten it up, put it to strike. Exactly. And more or less, it's going to be in the corner with a circle hook. Yep. That's what we're aiming for here, hopefully. Now, you've been finding the fish have been holding in a certain uh, depth, or are they just all over the map? I think most of them are probably in that like 40, 50 feet range. Feet range. If you can get them above that, then you got a good chance of hooking one. Like, oh. if you get them up at 25 feet, or yeah. we got a fish finder. We can see the fish marking on there and shooting up and down. Yeah, they're here. I mean, we've been marking them steady since we got here. They just won't come up past that 50 foot mark. Now, you try to boat captain out of Green Harbor. Green Harbor. Yeah. But how does this compare to the fishing that you do back home? It's pretty much the same thing, but back home we can potentially sit on the water for two, three, four days trying to get one bite or two bites. And here you can literally come out and get three or four, five, That's six in a day. And you can um, spit on land. Yeah, and the thing is, and the reason why the fishing here is so good is because Canada's been so great about their fisheries management. There's a direct correlation to the amount of bait and the amount of fish that are around. But I mean, the herring and the mackerel come in here and they stay here. I mean, the tuna fish come up here and it's like a, it's like a buffet. It's a literal buffet. I and mean, the mackerel too. We weren't 300 yards out no, of the harbor and all no, of a sudden we're crushing. No, nope, just like we do back home in May and June, yeah. but they have it here. I think 
June through October they have their mackerel, so it's 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 pretty easy for them to get their bait, and it's easy for the tuna to get fat. So they come up here and wait till you, wait till you, we get them. Hopefully they come up beside the boat. It's it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. It's just the size of their tail and the amount of water they move. You literally see a boil the size of the back of this boat, and and that's kind of half the time your first clue that yeah, they're there. Yeah, right, that they're there. And that's when you really start chumming and start paying attention and, and having fun. At that point, you can almost hook them at will, you know? When they start like that, you just drop them in and it can be game on? Yeah, well, you start feeding them herring, start giving them freebies, and, 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 and one once the they get into the mode of, hey, we're getting free lunch, you just slide one with a hook in it, and you can literally see them pick watch up. your bait and see the fish that ate your bait. So you kind of know what you're in for depending <laughs> on, on what fish picked up your bait. Ooh, did you see him smash oh, right you there? Saw it right there, right below the Yeah, wait, under the birds. Yeah. yeah. I guess we're looking over there. It gets the blood boiling. Yeah, they're here. We just finished up our drift, and while we were moving to reset, Bruce's brother Ross hooked up. So we're going to swing by and take a look and give him a little bit of heckling. And reset and try to get ours. See him right there. That's one thing about Bruce Q is he's so easy going, he's gonna let his brother hook up first because they got a grandmother on board. All right, well, we just came up alongside the other half of uh, North Lake Charters. Uh, Bruce told his other brother to head west. That really panned out for him, huh? Oh, yeah, he listened, <laughs> yeah. He listened to the better guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, these guys are hooked up to a giant alongside. We're gonna stay out of their way. Bruce's dad, Cor, is at the helm right now. He's a second generation. Ross is behind the helm over here on the Neptuna. Cor, that's pretty, gotta be pretty cool seeing your kids out here, huh? You got a giant on, it's exciting. Can't be that, can't be that far. That line's right in front of you there. Yeah, staying about 50 feet, eh? Up and down, up and down. You got a live one on there too, on the on the bottle. Yeah. Can you uh, hold that like that for yeah. me? Got it. Tie that on, and that way, when that tuna bites, the bottle just pops off. Snap and gone. It doesn't interfere with our fight. Yeah. So we just sent the mackerel out. I was putting this bottle on as a replacement for a balloon. The guys up here tend to like using bottles. Boy, this looks balloons. awesome in here, right? We got a great drift here. And uh, we got some real, what looks like good water. We got a lot of birds working. I like this right here. This looks good. Stage is set nicely. Stage is set, the table is set. The kite allows us to pull the bait, and just swinging away from us. We got a mackerel swimming just on the surface, about 60, 70 feet off the uh, starboard side here. I just want to see that thing just get rolled up. Pretty sure I saw a big boil. Might want to throw a dead heron out there if he's not going to eat this one. Oh, they'll start feeding here. We'll get hungry here. Come on, come on. That was awesome. I swore I saw a boil on it there. Didn't look too big of a fish, but. Now when I say not too big, and he looked about 400 pounds. Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. There he is. Here he is, here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, has he got him? Just no, outside of it. no. Just outside hold on. of it, look at the tail. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. Come on, buddy. Just keep feeding them. There he They're is. right there. He's, he's still just boiling. Turned just turned on it. There he is. We got, we got him. 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 You see him turn? All right, I'm going to get the. All right. 
we got him hooked up. Yeah, go ahead to the port. Lord, Fred. There we go. That's good. Yep. Hit, crack, crack, crack. Come on, get it. Right, right, right. Both on it. Coming off your bow there. Feel that burn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Oh, quite underneath there. Whoa. The one of the critical <laughs> things that help you get these giant fish to the boat stand up is the harness. And what the harness that Chris is wearing helps you do is. <laughs> really use your body instead of your arms to hold the brunt of the weight of the fish. It's designed so that your legs really take most of the pressure and all you really do is squat, get your rod tip up, and as you're sitting back up, gain that foot or two a line and basically repeat the process seven or eight hundred times and hopefully the fish stays buttoned on long enough for you to get on both sides. We put our time in this morning and we deserve this fish. Now Chris is in for it. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how big this fella is. 600? Could be. Could be a thousand. It is widely known that Prince Edward Island is a tuna capital of the world, and of all the giant fishermen on the island, most would agree that Poor Cues is the finest of them all. The son of Michael Cues, a Dutch fisherman who immigrated to Nova Scotia to fish in the early 50s, by 17, Core had quit school and was fishing George's Bank. Once an established fisherman, Cor bought his first boat, the Stephen K, moved to PEI and started fishing out of North Lake for everything from herring and mackerel to giant bluefin. It wasn't long before Cor started having success with giant bluefin, and over the years, Captain Cues would set the world record for 80 pound tests three times aboard his vessel. Monty Drummond from South America would set the mark first with a 1,010 pound giant only to be beat by Dr. Jack Steffi from California who claimed the record with a 1,055 pound bluefin before beating his own record with another giant of 1,116 pounds all aboard Captain Q's boat. I can still see that fish coming in on a daisy chain. Corey recalled to me when describing the existing 80 pound world record he put Dr. Steffi on September 26, 1985. At one time, Cork Hughes held the 130-pound all-tackle world record aboard his boat with a 1,235-pound giant caught by Michael McDonald until it was topped in 1979 by Ken Frazier's current world record of 1,496 pounds caught out of Nova Scotia. From 1986 to 1995, the giant bluefin disappeared from the Gulf of St. Lawrence due to overfishing in the Gulf of Mexico where these fish migrated from. It was Captain Cork Hughes who caught the last PEI giant in 86, and he and his son Bruce would be the first to catch one in 95 when the stocks rebounded enough for giants to show up once again from Nova Scotia to PEI. Today, both sons Ross and Bruce have followed their father and grandfather to the sea and have become extremely adept at targeting giant bluefin recreationally for anglers traveling from all over the world for a chance to catch a true giant. You gotta put this on the bucket list, man. I'll tell you right now. You can see the shore off my right shoulder here. We're not a mile offshore, maybe a mile and a half offshore. People are incredible up here. We basically barged in on the uh, Q's family. Next thing you know, we had a full dinner served to us. Probably the best seafood shot I've ever had in my life. We aim to please. We'll try to do it anyways. that way. Go ahead to your port, bird. The core is just positioning the boat for us, trying to keep the fish off of this quarter stern. That way he can keep an eye on it and there's just less of a chance of running underneath the boat. We like to land our fish on this side, wide open so the captain can see what's what. All the young guys hang out in the back doing all the hard work. <laughs> It only takes them a second to rip off 50 yards. It takes 10 minutes to get it back. I think stand up is the coolest way to go. It really. is so fun. Yeah. Make some man out of you. 
job. I know all about it. It's like having a bar mitzvah at any age. <laughs> Carrie, pretty cool too, but. I like that, Brent. <laughs> Fred, what are we up? You said it's 45 pounds on this? Yeah, we've got 45 pounds sitting right at strike. Okay. So, and you're kind of going back and forth a little bit so you can see how much power they yeah. actually have. It's like I take up 20 feet, he takes back 15. Yeah. yeah. So, we had a couple of different rods out. Some of them were designated stand up rods, like the short one. We had a couple of uh, long eight footers out. And fish ate this stand up one, so Chris kind of had no choice but to <laughs> fight him out of the harness. Good way to break them in. It is what it is. This is awesome, though. There's okay. no better way of doing it. I mean, I you're you. connected directly to the fish. You feel every little tweak of that fish. It makes it feel all that much better when you finally do get them both sides. That, that you did the work. Yeah, exactly. The What's nice about this too? This harness. I'm not using my arms right now. I'm using the smart end of me. Braid spent years and years perfecting stand-up fishing and, and through tons of design and development he came up with this harness that, that really makes it possible to land fish this size stand-up which normally you'd, you'd, no one would even fathom catching fish this size stand-up gear you know 10 years ago. Hey guys and gentlemen let me grab the rod too I think. <laughs> all, uh, <laughs> all yours. Well he's got to be right there under that wave. Yeah. Surfing it. Now at the end game, will they sometimes dip under the boat? Yeah, the fresh like this, yeah. They'll just like dart forward. That's what happened to us yesterday yeah. on one. Darted really fast. I'm just gonna stay in this corner, he'll bring it around a few. Yeah, I'll try to and I'll try to use my hands too. Okay. But if he goes right under and I say kind of slack on the drag, I'll just kinda of go Back down. Back like, it off about halfway. Yeah, about three quarters. Be cool, okay. Yeah. I'll listen just to you. Give, if, just if it, if it yeah, does go yeah, way so under. We need to give a little pressure. Yeah. Off. Might have a chance then. I thought I saw him twice there. He's just I swore I seen him there. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna come up here. Oh. <laughs> Swivels right here. There he is. There, there he is. He is. <laughs> Coming at us. I'll give it to you one second. Yeah, keep dragging him up. You have to let him go, let me know. Yeah, I gotta let him go. He's gotta be tired, this fish. Known for its sheer beauty, Prince Edward Island sits just above the more popular Canadian maritime province of Nova Scotia. And visitors would say it is the best kept secret Canada has to offer. With sweeping fields, rich farmlands, and an incredible fishery, Views of the Gulf of St. Lawrence appear at times to be visible from all parts of the island. The nearly 12-hour drive from Cape Cod took us through the wild lands of New Brunswick and was a relatively easy trip considering 800 plus pound giant bluefin tuna were waiting for us along with the nicest people we had ever met during our 10 years of filming on the water TV. I had this fish to the boat twice, lead it twice. Tail gap once. I can't believe he's just running with that. 55 pound pressure. We had leader. He did not like that. I thought you had the tail there for a second. I had him for a second. He kicked me right off. Let's go to South there, right? Seem to go or the old. Try to hang on to the gunnel. I didn't want to break him off. I actually felt the almost like the hook was straightened a little bit. I was like, oh, I didn't want to pull anymore. No, thank you. I got a good, good look at him. He's big. I would say he's big. <laughs> Bigger than anything I've caught. 
That's all I can tell you. We were talking last night that sometimes the six to 700 pound fish have the worst attitude. Bruce was saying that sometimes the 900 thousand pound fish will come up easier than some of these 700 pound fish. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're, we're right there though. Yeah, we're close. Just another second longer, I would have had them, I think. Can't be 15 feet or so. We should be able to see that swivel break in the water any minute now. 25 again. There he is. See him? See him. Come see, see his color. Again. See color again. He's coming up. Stay there. Stay there, father. Might be good 800 pounds, though. Oh, straight in the jaw. No, 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 no. Neutral, 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 neutral. He's a big boy. He's a nice fatty. So what do you think your first PI uh, giant? Kind of gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> Surreal, even. Check off the bucket list, but you got to get up here. You guys, get an opportunity to come up here to Prince Edward Island. You have to do it. North Lake Charters fishing with Captain Cork Hughes, Captain Bruce Hughes, his son, and Captain Fred from Massachusetts. Chris Mandy from Underwater Magazine. Thanks for tuning in. Time to let him go? Yeah. Time to let him go, boys. There he goes. Oh, big guy. See you later. Woo! Kind of something else, huh? Those are nice fish. Stand up here for 800 pound fish. I think we, we tied into that fish at about. Five minutes of 11. It's 12:20 now. We probably got a leader at about 45, 50 yeah, minutes. Yeah. Talk fish. We got a tail at about 50, uh, 55 an uh, hour. Yeah. Got soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got a we got a giant at uh, an hour and 20 minutes on stand-up gear, two miles offshore. Guys, you have to get up here to Prince Edward Island. You have to make it a, a, a bucket list item. It's well worth the trip. Oh God, was that awesome? Huh? Yeah. Good job. Ready to do it again? Again? I think I'm going to sit back and watch on the next one. <laughs> see how the pros do it. Let's go. Hook it on. We're off the stern. Off the starboard over here. Cool, under us too. Five fish on the screen. Oh, we're looking at them crashing through right here. There we oh, go. Oh. There we go. That's not a the primary goal is just to get a fish dead. Tied off to the side of this boat. It's not for fun today. Well, it's still kind of fun. Right? Feels like a big fella, boys. Guys, catching a giant bluefin in PEI was something else. But hang with us, it only gets better in part two. Join us next week when we head back out on the water for giant tuna.